Welcome, and thank you for joining me today as we go over the Rocket Restart Framework for school year 2020-2021. Before we get started, I would like to say a special thank you to Mrs. Kristen Guthrie, and Mr. John Otterbacher, Mrs. Megan Campbell from the Ridgedale Teachers Association, Mr. Andy Ricketts, Mrs. Kathy Hamilton, and Mr. Ed Roush from the Ridgedale Board of Education, and Mr. Greg Rossman, Ms. Jessica Parthamore, and Mr. Sam Staten from the administration for helping to put this framework together as we begin to look at school year 2020-2021. I would like to draw your attention to this first slide at the bottom, and please understand that we are in a constant change and readjustment period through this pandemic. And notice that all plans are subject to change based on evolving conditions data about the status of the pandemic, and recommendations and guidance from Marion Public Health. The guiding principles we will be using for this framework come from the principles that were used for the reopening agreement with all the Marion County schools, including Tri-Rivers and Marion Public Health. The Ridgedale School District will implement recommended safety protocols to the highest degree possible. Ridgedale School will work closely with the Marion County Health Department to promote safety in each school building. The Ridgedale District will be transparent with all stakeholders that some level of risk is always present when children and school district employees occupy school district facilities. The school district recognizes the need for consistency in areas of operation while recognizing that individual differences in classroom sizes, school facilities, and building operations may lead to some variations throughout the school year. The Ridgedale District is planning to maintain their previously approved school calendar with front loading of employee professional devel development with an online option for parents wishing to educate from home. We will get into these as further as we move through the presentation. As we prepare for the 2020-2021 school year, there are three different scenarios that we could encounter in the near future. First and foremost would be all in. Well parents, well, well, parents and students will have two choices. First, parents and students can choose to physically attend school in person Monday through Friday with increased cleaning and disinfecting practices in place. We will be front loading five days of professional development for teachers, and the student start date will be moved back to August 31st, 2020, with 50% of the K-12 population attending school on 831, the other half are second 50% of the K through 12 students attending on 9-1 with all students in attendance on Wednesday 9-2. The second option in this scenario would be parents and students will have the option of educating from home in remote learning Monday through Friday with a device provided by the district. The second scenario we could encounter would be blended learning. This is if we are ordered by Marion Public Health or the state of Ohio where 50% of the students would be attending on alternating days with Fridays reserved for teacher check-in and online student meetings. The third scenario would be remote learning for all. Again, if ordered by Marion Public Health or the State of Ohio, all students would attend school online with their classroom teachers following set schedules developed by each building's leadership team. We will get into these different scenarios in the next few slides. At large. The Ridgedale All-In Plan. Again, reiterating, first, students would physically attend in person Monday through Friday with increased cleaning and disinfectant practices in place. Please note that all disinfectant and cleaning practices meet CDC and FDA requirements as required by law. We will be front-loading five days of professional development for teachers. We will be utilizing Google Classroom as our online instructional method. We're doing the five days of front loading for PD to train our teachers August 24th through the 28th in the use of Google Classroom to be able to better instruct our children in the use of Google Classroom in case we need to go into a blended learning or a remote learning situation. Students will be divided up into two groups, group A and group B. Groups A and Group B will be developed as we move through the summer, and each student will be notified prior to the beginning of the school year which group they fall in. As we begin the school year, we would like to help 
our students learn more about Google Classroom and smaller group settings and have our teachers work the week of August 31st through September 4th in the Google Classroom platform. So if we need to move to blended or remote learning, our students will have a better understanding of how Google Classroom will work. August 31st, we will have Group A, or 50% of our K-12 through students, report to school as normal at 8 a.m. On Tuesday, September 1st, Group B, or the second half, or second 50% of students, will attend classes beginning at 8 a.m. on Tuesday the 1st, with all students attending on September 2nd, Wednesday. The second option of the all-in plan is parents will have the option of keeping their students home for remote learning Monday through Friday with a device pro provided by the district. Depending upon the number of students that we have that, that select this method of instruction will determine whether or not we are purchasing seats through a secondary vendor to provide curriculum and instruction online, or if we have enough students that do not select this option, we will use our own teachers and our own curriculum to deliver this instruction online. That decision will be made through a survey that will be sent home beginning tomorrow that will allow parents to determine whether or not they are sending their students into school full time or if they are remaining online all time. Students selecting the option of staying at home and educating online will be required to stay online for the entire first semester. At the end of the first semester, a decision may be made to continue to educate online or to return to the building um, physically. With the all-in plan, all students will be here every day with three feet of social distancing. We are asking that all parents assess student health before school. Face masks will be required per district expectations which we will get into in the next slide. We will have additional cleaning of surfaces, hand sanitizing stations in each room and throughout the buildings, two students per seat on the bus, recommending that students in the, from the same family sit together. Lunch room space will be expanded to other areas of the building. There will be no visitors or volunteers. There'll be no shared student supplies. There'll be no shared lockers. Limited hallway traffic when possible, breakfast grab and go, no field trips, and no large group student events. Attendance will be taken daily, either on in line, either in person or online per district policy. As we talk about face masks, what we've come up with a face mask policy is all teachers and staff will be required to wear a face mask or a face shield provided by the district. The district will also provide every student with one face mask at the beginning of the school year. For kindergarten through second grade students, masks on buses and in hallways is mandatory. Masks in classrooms per teacher direction and when being outside is practical. For grades three through six, Masks on buses and in hallways, again, is mandatory. Masks in classroom per teacher direction and when being outside is practical. Grades seven through 12, masks on buses and in hallways is mandatory. Masks in classrooms per teacher direction and when being outside is practical. While the district cannot mandate the use of face masks or face shields, they are strongly encouraged and strongly recommended to be used by all students, especially those in grades seven through 12. If your child or student cannot wear a face mask, there will be a health appeal process for face coverings with the district nurse or personal physician. The appeal process and forms will be available by August 1st. Face shields and other measures of face covering will be approved through the appeal process. And the district will work closely with local healthcare professionals and Marion County Public Health. If you have any questions or concerns concerning the mask policy, you may direct them to me at the Ridgedale Administration Office. The Ridgedale Hybrid Plan would come to us whether the Marion County Health recommendation or the Ohio Department of Education and Marion County is on a level three or red. At this point, 
we would have group A, which will be determined in August, and your child will know prior to the start of school. 50% of the students K through 12 will go to school on Monday and Tuesday. Group B, the second half or other 50% of the students in K through 12, which your child will know which group they're in prior to the school district, school district starting in August, will go to school on Wednesday and Thursday. All students then will be remote learning on Friday with teacher-led groups or meetings. Groups A and B will be determined as we get closer to school starting. Every student will have a device provided to them by the district this school year. Last year, we sent devices home with each family. We now have enough Chromebooks that each student will be able to have their own device to bring home for distance learning. Should you have a need for increased connectivity at home, we will be having mobile hotspots again provided by T-Mobile. However, they may not work as well as we have we would like, and we are still working with the state and federal governments to expand connectivity into rural America. The Ridgedale Hybrid Plan would consist of 50% of the students in the buildings on selected days. Again, we are asking that parents assess student health before school. Face masks are required for staff and students. Additional cleaning of surfaces. Hand sanitizing and hand sanitizing stations in every classroom and throughout the buildings. We would have one or two students per seat on buses, depending upon if they are family members from the same household. Lunchroom space is expanded to other areas. There'll be no visitors or volunteers, no shared student supplies, no shared lockers, Limited hallway traffic is practical. Breakfast grab and go. No field trips, no large group gatherings or events, and special education services may be adjusted. Attendance will be taken daily per district policies. Also, for those who are wondering, when 50% of the students are in the building on selected days, we will make sure that students from the same family are attending school on the same days. In the remote learning situation, we would go on remote learning if Marion County Health recommends, the state of Ohio recommends, and or Marion County is on a level four or purple. This would entail that all students would learn from home five days a week with a device provided by the district. Schedules are being set by each building leadership team as to what subject areas and topics and times during the day that the students will be required to be online and what they will be learning each day. Schedules will be available if the need for remote learning is a reality by the beginning of the school year. Again, every student will have a device for remote learning and hotspots will be, will be available for families that need them. A question that has been raised, is what if we go to a level four and we are recommended to go to remote learning and the next week we go to a level orange and we can now do blended learning, how long or how often will we change? While we, need, while we understand the need for students to be in the classroom, we also understand the need for consistency. That determination will be made through discussions with Marion Public Health. Marion Public Health has informed myself and the other county superintendents that depending upon where hot spots are, the four county school districts may be on four different schedules at any given time. Also, that depending on the hot spots or in an age group that is outside of the school age children, we may be allowed to have our children in class five days a week in a blended learning model when we are on a level four or purple. So a lot of recommendations and guidance from Marion Public Health will be taken into consideration prior to moving to a level four or remote learning in any given situation. As far as regional remote learning is concerned, Brett, we'll have breakfast and lunch grab and go at select locations with the possibility of delivery of lunches as we did in the spring when we had building closures. There'll be no field trips, There'll be no large group student events, no athletic contests, no extracurricular activities or events or practices. Special education services may be adjusted and attendance will be taken daily during Zoom sessions. Students need to understand that if we go into remote learning, remote learning will not look like it did in the spring. 
Students will be accountable for attendance daily. They will be accountable for all lessons and lessons that need to be completed on a, on a daily or weekly basis. Grades will be recorded and, and quizzes and tests will be given and recorded. The Marion County risk levels from the state of Ohio, as you all are well aware, the Ohio COVID risk level guidelines for the public are level one yellow, level two orange, level three red, and level four purple. Regional operations related to risk levels. In level one yellow and level two orange, we will have school all in five days per week. Again, that is with two options. One where students are physically in attendance, Monday through Friday, or the second option is where the parent and student determines that they want to educate online. In level three or red, and again, this will be based upon Marion Public Health guidelines or the state of Ohio, the hybrid plan of 50% of the students attending Monday and Tuesday, 50, the other 50% attending Wednesday and Thursday with everyone online on Friday. Again, as I said, stated in the last slide, Based upon Marion Public Health guidelines, we may see that if the age group of the people who are being affected by COVID-19 are an elderly population and is not affecting our younger children, we may be in school all five days, even in a level red. We also may be splitting our buildings at that time where our elementary school may be going five days a week, and our high school may be on a hybrid plan or in remote learning, depending upon what age group of folks are being affected most by COVID-19. At level four or purple, again, based on Marion Public Health guidelines in the state of Ohio, all online five days a week with schedules to follow later in the summer. And again, reiterating that based upon those guidances, we may be able to have our students in a hybrid plan, even though we are on purple, based upon the demographic that is becoming ill with the COVID-19. Please be assured that we will continue to adapt and adjust as we move through this pandemic. As a reminder, plans are at this moment, and we will continue to reevaluate based on evolving conditions, data about the status of the pandemic, and recommendations given to us from Marion Public Health Authorities in the state of Ohio. For the latest information, please log on to the Ridgedale website, ridgedaleschools.org, and questions may be directed to your building administrators at the junior and senior high school, Mr. Rossman or Ms. Parthamore, and at the elementary school, Mr. Staten, or myself, Mr. Britton, at rbritton at ridgedaleschools.org, or you may phone the administration office at 740-382-6065. Thank you very much for attending today and have a great day.